Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16, the Bible says, Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one. So, taking the shield of faith and you are able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one. So let, let's look at an example. If you had a gasoline somewhere, let, let's just, right now the gasoline prices are going up, so it would be a, a nice example to use. <laughs> okay, so if you had gasoline in, in a garage somewhere, or you had some dynamite in, in your garage somewhere, would you permit, if you had some combustive, uh, combustibles, materials in your garage, would you allow your kids to go running in there with a matchstick? Would you permit anything that is flammable to get near these items? What do people do when they have flammable um, items in an area? Uh, if you work in companies, they have labels, okay? And they teach you about safety, okay? And one of the things you have to learn is memorize all this, you know, science, you know. <laughs> this means you know, we, we have, uh, you know, a spell. This means that this is a biohazard. This means that, you know, if anything like this happens, you can't touch it. you got to call the managers to deal with it. Uh, there's these three people that handle this stuff. You, you don't. You just have to call them to, you know. So would you permit an explosive item to come into contact with fire? Would you permit match sticks being lit up or somebody smoking a cigarette near a gasoline? All right. It, it's, it's easy for us to say that, but this is exactly what I, I'm using this as a picture. Here. So you take every precaution to see that no flame and no spark of any kind comes close to an explosive material. It's natural for you to do that. All right. Now, we want to turn this into a spiritual lesson here. So, all of us that are seated here, you have actually a gasoline inside of you, or you have a, a dynamite inside your old nature. I would call it a combustible item in your old nature. And what I mean by a combustible item in your old nature is something that when Satan throws his flaming arrows into your soul, that thing will catch fire. It's either a passion, it is an, an unsurrendered desire. It may be an inclination of the flesh that has not completely been surrendered to the spirit. And therefore, when a fiery dart comes into your soul, this thing lights up. Sometimes people call it, uh, this, that person knows how to press my buttons. Have you ever heard of that? These people know how to work me up. Oh, that person knows how to drive me crazy. Every time I get around them, I, I get apprehensive, okay? Uh, I don't want to go around those people because they push my buttons. We, we say those things, but we, we rarely realize that those buttons that we are talking about are actually combustible items or evil passions or cravings or desires that are entrenched within your old nature. And Satan knows them. So he knows where to send his fiery flames and he knows what's going to catch fire. He knows how to get you worked up. He knows how to get you frustrated. He knows how to get you flustered to the point where everybody around you will recognize something has changed. He has mastered those passions and he will ignite them consistently. And sometimes he will do them 20 or 30 times. He's waiting to shoot his flaming arrows into your unregenerated areas in order to combust these areas, in order to set them on fire. This is the reason why Satan will rarely tempt you in an area that you have been victorious. He will rarely waste his flaming arrows on areas of your life that you have overcome and you have conquered. You will look and, and listen to this. Every time God exposes an area of your uh, unregenerate self that must be surrendered to Him, those are the moments you go into a fast immediately. You submit yourself into a fast 
and you allow those areas to die. It doesn't matter how many times you have to fast those areas until those areas are no longer controlling you. They have no more mastery over your spirit. And this is consistent. Weekly, God will show you something. When you think it's all done and you're all prepped up, then God will allow calamity to come into your life that will expose you so badly that you'll go back to ground zero to draft, to, to, to take, to have, take an examination and, 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 and look into yourself again and find. And this happens consistently until you gain mastery of your flesh. Because as long as any area of your flesh is not surrendered that would be an area that the enemy will target frequently areas that you have not mastered those will be the areas that satan will visit consistently and he will do it 20 30 times until he realizes that you're changing course so he is very excited to flame these areas to set them on fire and watch you act it out in front of people he can't wait until he can drag you into gossip and slander. He can't wait until he can drag you into bashing other men of God. Uh, he, he can't wait until he can drag you into a lifestyle of looking down on, on people. And, 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 and he, he just watches that and he keeps doing it. And the more you're doing it, the more you're losing spiritual power. Because spiritual power is lost based on how we yield on the flesh. You get to a level of the spirit and instead of maintaining it, you start coming back down. Every time you resist the working of the spirit, you lose a spiritual stature. Every time you refuse to listen to that voice that is disciplining you, you lose your spiritual position. You lose power. And one day, just like Samson, you will wake up and shake yourself and there's nothing. Samson didn't get there overnight. It was a little step by step until he shook himself and there was nothing there. He lied to himself that everything was okay. And it's easy when you're called to lie to yourself that God is with you because some signs and wonders are manifesting. In the reality, if the relationship area is not checked, listen, it's not in the service that God is interested in. He's more interested in the relational issues. Service can be accomplished by any dumb person who can read a Bible. A dumb person who doesn't know God can pick the Bible and read it up and people can listen to that. And some people can get saved. Because the Bible will work for itself. The message is more important than the messenger. So Satan has gotten people deceived. In, and, and, and let me just say this because this is another fr frustrating thing. is Because the church used to be a place when you walked in, there was communion tables. When you walked in, there was a kneeling section for people praying. The church used to be decorated in a way that there was a sacrament, there was a baptismal, there was a foot washing. There was all these things in front of the church. And those were the investments of the church. But now, the biggest investment is on sound equipment and stage lighting and smoke machines. We have slowly pushed out the ordinances and sacraments of God from the pulpit and replaced it with a nice stage. So now when you hear people talking about their churches, all they want to talk about is a beautiful building that is comfortable. Come and see our stage. We designed it. We hired an interior designer to design the stage. But when you look at the stage, there's no baptismal. When you look at the stage, there's no communion table. When you look at the, the, the pulpit, there's no honest section for prayer. Th th these are not emphasized because it used to be you came to church and the message convicted you and forced you to change the way you're walking so that you can walk in a way that is pleasing to God. But now that is not important. Good, nice sounding music and flashing lights and dimmed lights and an atmosphere that looks like a theater or a movie theater is more important than this element. So it says, above all, take the shield of faith where you'll be able to quench the fiery dirt of the enemy. So this is the devil's chief spot. His chief spot is making fool of God's people by using their weaknesses against them. He studies your weakness, then he uses your weakness against you. All right. So he's looking for the right moment, and he's not going to do it 
when you expect him. He's going to wait for the right moment to fire one of these flaming ideas into that combustible gasoline. And when that impulse inside of you comes into contact with the fiery darts, an explosion. He has gotten you to sin and act on that sin. And then you lost your reputation. One of the worst weapon he uses against men and women of God is loss of reputation. God is forgiving enough, but humans are never forgiving. God can take a man or a woman of God who has fallen horribly, and God can restore them. David is a testament to that. Abraham is a testament to that. Samson is a testament to that. God can take people who have fallen and restore them gently. You cut God and you find love. You cut humans and you find hatred. Satan will wait until your integrity is in question because he knows if your integrity is in question, then people will think twice before they listen to you. You wonder why most great men of God have been attacked viciously. When a believer decides to be a militant or a zealous believer, all of a sudden, every horde of hell rises up against you. Why? Because you have the potential to raise up, okay? You have the potential to raise up radical people who are able to engage the enemy and to defeat him. You are a threat. So Satan sends his hordes all around you and everything around you is being worked up. You don't face a spiritual battle? Uh, Stop worrying if there's no physical fight, if there's no warfare. Worry about your walk with God when there's no warfare. When there's no fighting that you can sense that there's tensions rising. And the only way to dampen that zeal of the enemy is by engaging in prayer consistently, watching and praying. If that zeal lacks, he will find you when you do not expect him to find you. And he will set you on fire. And before you know it, You'll be going back to the drafting ground and saying, God, forgive me in this area. That's why I'm saying searching and, 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 and looking at the areas of your life to make sure that whatever God showed you, take a three-day fast. Take a four-day fast. Take two days fast. And say, God, you showed me this about me. Lord, help me in this area. If you ask God to teach you obedience, your life will be flipped around. It will make you go through some difficult situation that will take him to get you out of. Realize that if he puts you in a situation, he gets you out of it. If you get yourself out, you're exposed. No protection there. The more we develop a craving for something of the flesh, the more explosive our passions will be. All right? So the more you develop a craving for something of the flesh, the more explosive your passion will be for that thing. And this goes on for years, and then our resistance is lowered. And when your resistance is lowered, and you can't fight, Satan's got you right where he wanted you to be. So, so then, then all, all that the devil has to do once your, uh, your defenses are lowered down is to drop one of his flaming ideas and the power of explosion is immediately potent. And so then we, we find ourselves driven by of, of overpowering impulses that to feed the flesh and to give it what it wants instead of denying it. Uh, tell somebody that before God can use you, there has to be an explosion of the inner man against the outer man. The, 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 the spirit man must overcome the outside man. Uh, when a man has not attained that stature, his ministry is ineffective. And today, sadly, many people think that successful ministry is having a thousand member congregation. Well, you can have a thousand people full of demons. Or you can have a thousand people who are walking rebelliously against God. And today, people think success in ministry is to have a private jet and to... Um, you know, and to be able to play golf. So is it okay to, to be blessed by these things? Yes. But when they do come, they better not get a hold of you. They better not control you. They better not change you from the person you've always been. 
the true essence of a successful minister is even when he has attained the highest uh, aptly cognitions, he still maintains who he is. Jesus did change. His disciples changed around him. They started blocking people from seeing him. Jesus wasn't blocking them. Jesus kept on saying, let him come to me. When the pride rises up to the top where you have to put people around you. So, and one of those explosions that we're talking about, it may not be carnality, but it may be food. Okay? So if Satan gets one of his fiery suggestions to ignite your combustible food craving. <laughs> that desire to eat will explode inside of you. And the fire may be nothing but just a whisper. The devil doesn't have to use variety of weapons. He just can come and whisper to your ears and say, Pizza. <laughs> he doesn't have to shout it aloud. He doesn't have to bang a sign on your window while you're driving and say, Pizza, pizza. He just have to whisper in your ears and say, Pizza. Can you smell it? And immediately you think of donatos. Or Papa John's, or Macy's, or <laughs> is there there's one called Macy's Pieces? Yeah, if you start thinking about all these things, and before you know it, your GPS is turning around. <laughs> I've done it, y'all. <laughs> Satan can say, How about another honey glazed apple pie? And the next thing you're saying is, yeah, yeah, that, that's fine with me. That would be great. And then you eat more than you need. And before you know it, you didn't need to eat that. He suggested it to you. The stomach is full. But it was a craving that was not authentic. It was a suggestion to eat more. Okay, so let's, let's try to visualize a, a Roman soldier. How many of you have seen a Roman soldier with this? Is, uh, you know, all those, you know, uh, shields and all, all those things. So you see him decked up in this armor and he carries this heavy shield in his arm, okay? And his left arm and a sword on the right hand. But look at the shield and don't look, don't lose focus on the shield. He has a shield and realize this, the, so, the, the Roman legion soldiers, what they did with, this, with the shield is they put water on it. They poured water on the shield so that when the fiery flame of an arrow comes and hit the shield, it dies immediately so before they would go and engage the enemy they knew that there would be flaming arrows so they would put water they would drench those shields in water to make sure that they're soaked in water so that and, and, and there's a revelation right there that if you're soaked in the word of god the enemy will come the, the, the word of god will silence the fire the word of god will silence the trial Every fiery dart that is shot towards you, immediately it finds that your faith is drenched in the Word. The Word of God is like water. So think about this guy. And all their shields are not just a, a dreadful and frightening, but they have water. They have drenched them with water. They are prepared. So think, think about how fast the flaming arrow comes. Because those flaming arrows did not come when you expect them. They come so fast. And when they're flying fast towards you, how quickly do you think you have to move to be able to block them? How, how, much, how much concentration, okay? How much concentration do you need, Michael, to be able to block one of these? They're coming from different directions. And all you have is this shield, okay? And you're putting it right here. And the, the flaming arrows are coming consistently. And you have to be like this all the time. You have to watch out them when they're coming. You have to block them. That's how fast Satan's arrows are being sent at you. And if you do not watch, one will get you. At some point, one will penetrate and puncture your armor. And the next thing you know, you're manifesting. So f f fire comes and fire heats that shield <laughs> and it, the word of God extinguishes the flaming arrows and the evil one throws another one and you block it, throws another one and you block it. But if there's no water, 
on your faith because it's called the shield of faith which means that is your walk with God if there's no word that is establishing your faith you're going to be distracted when the flaming arrow comes you're going to be thinking of something other than the word of God and that is a distraction enough for the enemy to get a space to set you on fire So the, the surface of the shield is, is leather. And that's what they did. They put leather on top of the shield and then they drowned that leather with water so that it can catch the fire. And that's a spiritual principle. You know, drench your faith in the word so that when there's confusion and distraction and the fiery flames flying all over you, you'll be able to block it so that you don't combust and be set on fire. Taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. If, if, if that's how fast he's throwing them consistently and seeing how you're blocking and how you're blocking, how you're blocking, to the point where Satan says he has blocked 20 out of 30. He's doing better. Let's keep doing it. And he keeps throwing until he realizes that you've mastered how to trap his thoughts when they're coming in and to say, no. Right there, stop. Then it will leave you for a quiet spell for a season. Then you will come back again and try again and try again. So it's not the question of mastering the word, but knowing how to apply it. So when it comes to intercepting the devil's fiery dirt, you don't have much time. Okay, you have to raise the shield of faith quickly, fast, to be able to swat these fiery darts and deal with them and quench them. And, and, and let me tell you, when a believer is not grounded in the word of God and the enemy starts throwing fiery darts, guess what happens to them? They, because they are not grounded in the word, they start saying, oh, I'm going to call Sister Linda to pray for me. That is a sign that their sword has not been engaged in the word. They hold the sword like a baby. Try to give, it's like giving David the sword of Saul. It doesn't work. Do you think David could have carried, uh, you know, Saul's big shield? No. David could not engage with weapons that he's not accustomed to. He had to find a weapon that he is accustomed to. But even when he picked up his weapons, he found them in the water. Again, we are told where the spirit, spiritual warfare comes from is in the water. He found five smooth stones in a brook. Your weapons are the sword of the spirit. They have to come from the spiritual realm. Our weapons are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. They have to come from the water. The water is the word of God. David says, please, don't give me earthly tools to fight the enemy. I'll find my weapons in the Word. 